today. I couldn't be more excited to announce and celebrate uh, the second round of response, innovation, and student equity fund investments uh, in education across our state, transformative investments that'll help provide opportunity to many more Coloradans by su supporting innovation and excellence, helping some of our great superintendents and, and school boards and community college leaders really turn the ideas and the vision that they have into reality. Uh, and we are so honored to be joined by several of Colorado's exceptional educational leaders. Uh, Mike Johnson, the CEO of the Gary Community Investments and Chair of the RISE Selection Committee. Chairman Manuel Hart from the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe. Nikki Johnson from Campo School District, the superintendent there. Don Rangel, the superintendent of Adams 14 Commerce City Area School District. We have Commissioner Dr. Katie Anthes, uh, and we have a CDHE Executive Director, Dr. Angie Piccioni, and we have our terrific Lieutenant Governor, Diane Primavera, with us here today. Uh, some of them will be presenting. We are all available for questions after the presentation. I also want to thank all the members of the RISE Selection Committee who put on so many hours evaluating all of these fabulous ideas from school districts and schools and community colleges and charter schools all over the state. And uh, we wish that, of course, uh, we, we could have been able to invest on in all of these great ideas or perhaps almost all of them. Uh, but I want to thank uh, all of the folks who volunteered their time and effort to the state of Colorado to really transform education. Mike Johnson, Dr. Tara Raines, Josh Scott, David Alguin, uh, Maurice Robinson, Marty Gutierrez, Elizabeth Thompson Barrett, Ernest House, Nina Lopez, Pat Clover, Dan Baer, Kelly Latterman, Jill Anschutz, Jeff Durbin, and Allie Kimmel. Thank you to everybody for helping to bring us to this day. Look, this uh, pandemic has forced us to face unimaginable challenges. Uh, and that includes the set of challenges faced by students and educators and families and schools. Because what we do with our schools doesn't just impact lives today but it shapes the future for our state, for future generations. And that's why that work is so important. And we know that the pandemic hasn't affected all students equally. Uh, many students who were, might have already been behind their peers or struggling to keep up, including many students who were low income and had special needs, uh, English language learners, students experiencing homelessness or teenage parents even had a harder time accessing material and receiving the one-on-one -on -one support that they need to catch up and to succeed. Uh, this is exactly why we created the RISE Fund, to lend extra support to students who are at higher risk of falling behind, to families who are disproportionately affected by the health impact of the pandemic, the economic impact of the pandemic, the social emotional impact of this very difficult year in human history. Uh, we focused on a few priority areas for the state, informed by the Education Leadership, or ELC's, excellent work, including student-centered learning, dramatically rethinking the higher education experience and how it links with the K-12 system, strengthening and formalizing the linkage between K-12 and higher ed and industry, and catalyzing innovations that really can drive long-term positive impact even after the two or three year life of this particular investment. And we asked applicants to consider three different questions. Connections, how will the proposed project Im improve community connections as well as student and family outreach in the learning process? And you know, there's part of the CARES 1 and CARES 2 Act that went directly to school districts and community colleges and some to the state and some to local government. But what we created through RISE was something very special. It values the interconnectivity between systems. It's not just an investment in a school district or in a community college or a four-year college or a county or city, but we value the connections, the cooperation between a community college and a school district and a four-year and an early childhood provider, all sorts of wonderful collaboration that we're able to incentivize and invest in with these transformative investments. Two, engagement. How does the proposed project increase student engagement and re-engagement, including by increasing interest in the learning process, relevance of the learning process, ensuring students are engaged in school, uh, regardless of what form that takes and tangibly what 
how they can benefit from that, meaning how can they graduate high school with the ability to earn a living, with a certificate, with an associate's degree, right? All of these types of things that engage students uh, in that whole uh, experience and outcomes, of course. How will the proposed project improve student outcomes, including academic and social emotional measures? And I'm proud to say that we will have uh, additional, so we have additional support around the tracking and measurement of outcomes so that we can further expand and replicate what works. Each round, recipients were chosen by the group of parents and students and education leaders that I mentioned earlier. The first round of grants was $14 million for 13 grantees, ranging from a project to improve migrant education in Northeastern Colorado to a program that was designed to increase engagement for ninth graders and encourage students across the state to really see uh, community college and, and college as achievable. The second round recipients today are receiving about $27 million for innovative projects across the state in Southern Colorado and Western Colorado and Eastern Colorado and the Denver and Colorado Springs metro areas. We're gonna profile just a few of these today and we'll release the entire list for you to see the amazing transformative investments being made, not only to help students and families, but frankly, to enrich and transform communities. Cripple Creek School District recognized through the crisis that a lack of economic diversification made their community ex exceptionally vulnerable to external shocks like the one that this pandemic has brought. So working with their community partners, they developed a proposal to not only train the students for the jobs of the future, that are needed in the community, but also to have a broader reach and be able to retrain adults in the community, including parents of many kids with skills as well, using the school as a real future oriented hub. And I wanna congratulate Cripple Creek and Victor uh, for that amazing innovative work as the superintendent described in the grant, quote, our goal is to lift our community out of poverty by providing skills and education that are accessible to all and immediately relevant. In the higher education space, Adams State University is partnering with the Boys and Girls Club of San Luis Valley and, and a number of school districts across the San Luis Valley to prepare San Luis Valley students for a rapidly changing workforce and to meet the needs of tomorrow's economy and prepare them for success. When I called Dr. Cheryl Lovell to let her know that uh, we were making the investment and she was awarded the grant, she, felt, she said she felt like the entire San Luis Valley had won this grant. And that's exactly the sentiment of collaboration that we wanted to achieve with this groundbreaking work. And there are smaller grantees like New Legacy Charter School, a charter school in Aurora that serves pregnant and parenting teens and their young children receiving a $250,000 investment to implement restorative practices, which are an evidence-based strategy to help students repair their relationships in schools and prevent disciplinary actions like suspensions and expulsions. And imagine all these, especially young mothers, uh, and the importance that they are positive role models for their kids so that we can have a virtuous cycle uh, of education, enlightenment, and prosperity for future generations. Academy 360, which is a coalition of 11 schools in Denver who are extending the school year to help address the impacts of COVID-19 and the lost classroom time, extending that school year to make up the time on task, one of the most important determinants of academic success. One of my favorite parts of this grant process has been how we promote and incentivize collaboration, not just between school districts and higher education, but between school districts and, and, and other school districts, and even in other parts of the state. They don't even have to be continuous. Um, it, that's what's so exciting. For instance, the St. Rain Valley Public Schools, a relatively larger district, they received 2.8 million, one of the larger grants, to collaborate with school districts across the state to develop a full-time summer literacy program for kindergarten through fifth grade students in, from Chirar and Estes Park and Los Animas and Montezuma Cortez and Sheridan School Districts, really leveraging the ability of a larger district to bring along uh, some low income families across the state in a process that we know will result in better literacy and better learning results for them. Bennett School District, together with Strasburg and Weld School Districts, identified the really challenging mental and emotional health needs students in rural Colorado face, especially in the face of the pandemic. And they came together to use their RISE grant to implement evidence-based programming <clears throat> to train school staff and increase youth access to a suite of mental health services uh, to support the social and emotional health of students on the Eastern Plains. These are just a few of the examples 
of incredible programs that are coming out of this program. And it was our goal to ensure that this opportunity was available to schools across our entire state. And these programs are not just going to affect students in these districts. We've already and will continue to work with the Colorado Evaluation and ACT Lab to rigorously evaluate these programs so that others can benefit from what works <clears throat> as we expand it. Um, I also want to note that thanks to the generous support from the Gates Family Foundation and Gary Community Investments, about half of the grantees received resources and strategic design help from the for the RISE Fund earlier this year. And, and they're able to do those applications because of the work of Gates Family Foundation and Gary Community Investments. This meant that these potential grantees could conduct the upfront strong community engagement efforts and design process to help make sure that they could really figure out what would benefit their community most. And as an example, Hayden School District <clears throat> worked with South Route School District in their planning and design, Colorado Succeeds, to do a deep dive on their needs, their strengths, their weaknesses, their regional aspects that gave way to their, their really innovative proposal to create a P-12 pathway into ag, one of the most important uh, industries in our state with the future of ag in mind and getting the skills that people needed uh, during their, their time in public education. The RISE program provides great flexibility. It's been heartening to see the creativity and innovation of schools across the state. And I'm so happy to have a few of the grant recipients here with us today. And I'm happy now to turn it over to Mike Johnston, the chair of the RISE committee. Mike. Thanks, Thanks Governor. Uh, honored to be with you and honored to be with some of our amazing recipients today. I'll just say a few words and delighted to let you all hear from some of the amazing local innovators who have won some of today's uh, awards. I will say today is a real moment of pride for the state of Colorado because yet again, I think the governor has led in a way that no other state in the country has led in a way to use CARES Act dollars creatively in this need. And so I think if you Look at what we saw around the country. We saw three fundamental earthquakes hitting education all at the same time. First was the profound academic losses we knew kids were going to be exposed to from potentially three summer slides in a row, right? Potentially kids who weren't as well served by uh, remote learning in the spring, plus a summer loss, plus this fall disruption meant we had many low-income kids who were going to be months, if not a year behind by the time we recovered from this. The second was the major earthquake impacting student mental health. We knew the impact that this kind of isolation or dislocation could have on kids was gonna be profound. And the third was we knew that this pandemic was gonna fundamentally change the economy, the jobs that were available, the pathways to get there, and how our schools were gonna be able to prepare our young people for that new world. And so what our governor courageously led on was to say, if we know those things are happening, let's dedicate dollars to work with local districts and local partners to help us identify innovative solutions to take those on. And what's great about this approach is as the governor said, it did two things at once. One was it really served to address those gaps as they exist right now in an immediate way around academic losses, around mental health, around a changing economy. But the governor also took advantage of this moment to say, let's not just put a bandaid on the current problem. Let's actually redesign the systems to build solutions that will resolve these long-term inequalities for generations to come. And so what you see in the winners today are not only really innovative, locally grown solutions to help serve communities that are badly in need, what you see are a new vision into solutions that will change the way we do education for decades to come. And I think from these innovations, we'll find real scalable solutions the rest of the state will learn from and the rest of the country will learn from. And so I just want to echo the governor's thanks of our RISE committee who did incredible work. We want to thank the hundreds of applicants who put in all the effort uh, to put their community's best thinking forward. Uh, and uh, again, want to thank the governor for his courage uh, to both dedicate these dollars to our young people and our educators who needed the most in a way to set an example for the rest of the country. So I think there are some very, very exciting uh, projects coming out of today that will bear some real fruit for us uh, for a long time to come. So, so grateful for having the chance to be involved in this. Uh, and I will uh, be delighted uh, to hand it over. Um, let's see. Um, to who is Man next? Manuel Hart from the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe. Oh yes, Manuel, you are up next. And we had it was such an honor to get to read your uh, application. We've moved so many of us. We're so delighted to get to hear your story uh, about your work. Hello, can everyone hear me? Okay. All right, if you can hear me, okay. Um, just want to say good afternoon to each and every one. Uh, I'd like to also first start off by 
Um, saying thank you to all the applicants that applied for this RISE grant. Today is a very blessed day for the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe. We received word that we were awarded the RISE grant from the state of Colorado through the office of the Colorado Governor Polis. This is what a true government-to-government -government relationship should be through a partnership of the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe and the state of Colorado. Currently, our tribe has 2,118 enrolled members. About 600 of them are under the age of 18. And as the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe, we have always considered education as one of our priorities for the future of our children, especially during this challenging time of the COVID-19 coronavirus. We must continue to strive every day to educate our children, our rich history, but also to look toward the future and future endeavors that they will each face in their lifetime as individual tribal members that are under the age of 18. As we continue to work together through many of our opportunities, we look at our program, and our program focuses on the development of a comprehensive education master plan that includes our new tribal school here on the Ute Mountain Ute Reservation, which is called Guerat Community Academy. Utilizing the Ute STEM curriculum focuses on the Ute arts, language, culture, and the traditions that we have and who we are as the Ute Mountain Ute people. We encourage our students, always remember where you come from, but always look toward the future and where you will be traveling in your life. So providing additional or wraparound service for parent, elder engagement, social and emotional support, after school program, project-based learning and youth entrepreneurship. So we on behalf of the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe encourage again, encourage everyone that's in the education system. On behalf of the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe, I would like to extend our appreciation to the governor of the state of Colorado for the opportunity to participate in the grant and for always recognizing the importance of the Ute, Ute history and the culture in the state of Colorado. With that, thank you, Governor, and thank you everyone that was involved with this. On behalf of the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe, our tribal council and our membership, Dawayah. Thank you, Chairman Hart. We're also joined by Nikki, Nikki Johnson from Campo School District in Southeast Colorado. Nikki. Thank you, Governor. Well, we're very excited to be awarded this grant because the opportunities will give our students and the impact that we think it'll have on our community. So Campo is a tiny community in the Southeast corner of Colorado. Um, we have less than 100 people living in town and we have 57 students preschool through 12th grade. But when we're, we're working with our community stakeholders, a priority need for our graduates is to have an option to return home and to start their careers and to raise their family. So for the past 10 years, our students have been involved in service learning, where they've been actively engaged in community improvement and planning. And the students discovered that a strong concern in our community was the lack of an economic stability and growth due to the lack of businesses. So our grant is actually three parts. The first part of our grant will focus on authentic learning by engaging students in finding solutions to real world problems by exploring business opportunities that will eventually benefit our community or um, at least the students. The students will have the equipment to manufacture their own designs and creations that can lead into their own business or provide them with the skills needed to be employable in that field. They will have the opportunity to develop their own mini business where they will leverage learned skills and needs analysis, financial structures, marketing, operations, and business development. The grant will provide the funds needed to purchase specialized equipment for our areas of interest, such as commercial sewing, jewelry manufacturing, engineering, photography, and metal and wood manufacturing. The next part of our grant will address the agricultural needs and innovation of processes for global sustainability. We've had plans that have been developed to convert an existing yet outdated <laughs> A school bus into a mobile greenhouse that can be utilized to develop and grow plants. All of our students, kindergarten through 12th grade, will be engaged according to their grade level and expertise in some aspect of project engineering, horticulture, marketing, and outreach, and the entire community will benefit from the distribution of plants, fruits, and vegetables. The secondary students will be involved in identifying opportunities to experiment with possible solutions to an ever-increasing need for global food production um, possibly hydroponics or aquaponics. And the final part of our grant is an existing partnership with the UCCS, uh, Un University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, for post-secondary academic success. Dr. Robert Mitchell from UCCS has been a support for the district for the past few years and will expand that support 
to ensure that students are making strong connections between the academic skills, application to product and service development, and how it relates to serving the needs of the community. So we were really excited to, um, to be awarded this grant. We want to thank the governor and the committee for, um, for their uh, for reading and, and their interest in our project. We know that it's going to be um, have tremendous benefit for our students and a tremendous benefit for our community. So thank you all very much. Thank you for the uh, the great words, and we're excited to really uh, monitor the progress and see all the great success that you have in uh, in southeastern Colorado with this uh, with this great program. Uh, we have one uh, final speaker to talk about a Denver metro area program, uh, Adams Fourteen, uh, Commerce City area. Uh, uh, not only uh, a, a district with a lot of challenges, but has gone through a lot over the last few years, and we're thrilled really to have the the leadership and the vision. Of, of Don uh, Rangel there, who will talk about uh, the investment, the, the transformative investment in Adams 14 School District. Don? It's possible Don is having technical trouble. Don, are you with us? There you are, go ahead. Uh, well, thank you, Governor. Um, thanks, for, uh, well, first of all, thank you for your involvement and your absolute grasp of detail of the of what's in each of our grants. It's uh, it's absolutely appreciated and it shows the commitment that you have to our to the education of children in our state. You know, um, our school district has really been on an accountability clock um, for close to a decade. And it's uh, and it is um, absolutely imperative as a school district um, that um, the low bar is moving off that accountability clock and becoming a performance level school system. Our, our school board really set a goal, um, a real strongly written goal that students would have access to skills and opportunities to prepare them for success on a post-secondary path of their choosing. Within this goal is a, is a sub goal that talks about our kids having a higher percentage of our kids graduate from high school, but also with a, with a diploma plus something else. And that plus really um, comes in the form of an industry certification, an associate's degree, a, a seal of biliteracy. And by exp um, this grant, what it is going to allow us to do is to expand career and technical opportunities. It, uh, it allows us to more effectively engage with our industry partners and implement a P-TECH model, um, uh, Pathways in Technology Early College High School Programming, P-TECH model, which... Um, those things are going to increase the relevance um, of learning for our students. Um, one of the things that I know for sure is that when students can see the relevance, just can see how it is that uh, what they are learning is going to benefit them and prepare them for their life when they leave us and when they graduate from high school, the greater likelihood that they're gonna engage fully uh, with us. Um, we believe that the Adams 14 students um, are talented, um, they have a ton of ability and they should be able to compete with students who graduate from many high school across this state. This proposed project uh, is an opportunity not only for us to realign the direction of the district and improve academic achievement, but also increase the enrollment of our school district. Um, our parents have been very, very clear with us since, uh, that since I arrived over the last year and a half about the fact that they want their children to have more career exploration and industry experiences. And this grant is going to allow us to do that. Um, we have some really strong partners in this process. And you spoke of partnerships earlier. We have a strong partnership with Front Range Community College. We, are, we have a strong partnership with the Association of General Contractors, a partnership with the National Certification Center. We're, we have a partnership with TRAIN. And we're working on partnerships with Fed, um, Federal Express South and Southeast or Southwest Airlines. I do want to say that we also have a strong partnership with the Colorado Department of Education and also with Adams County. Um, the Adams County Workforce and Business Center really created an overview for us um, as we were working on this grant to provide us the current economic and workforce conditions of Adams County. And, state, and they really did state that there is an opportunity uh, through this grant to meet uh, the economic needs and help improve the economic needs of the community that we serve. So we couldn't be more grateful for this, and we really look forward to um, utilizing um, the, these dollars wisely and uh, and putting together a program that's going to meet the needs of our kids in a much more thorough way. 
Thank you, Don. And we're also joined by Dr. Katie Anthes, Commissioner, Dr. Angie Piccioni, uh, Higher Ed, and Lieutenant Governor Diane Primavera. And with that, we'll open it up to questions. Hi, it's Mary Ann Goodman of Colorado Politics. I have two questions. Um, the first is the funding source for this. I believe I heard it was CARES Act money. And I thought CARES Act money was supposed to be out the door and spent by December 31st. Yeah. Yet this sounds like these grants were just announced a few days ago. I have yeah. checked, the checks already been cut for this. That's number one. Uh, and then to uh, Mr. Rangel, how many students in Adams 14 will benefit from this program? Don, you go first. You got to unmute. Uh. I apologize again. Um, right now, we have um, roughly 1,600 students in our um, comprehensive high school and another 400 students in our alternative high school. And so students that are going through the um, both high schools will be able to benefit. So... Um, I want to thank our federal delegation, uh, including former Senator Gardner and Senator Bennett, for supporting uh, the CARES Act, uh, which is the funding that is uh, we, we have designed a program at the state to invest in ex innovation and excellence. So uh, this is different than the state and local funding piece of CARES Act, Marianne, which is what you're referring to that uh, was supposed to be spent last year. I think it was extended. This is a different... Uh, pot, pot of money. Uh, there were a number of pots of money in there with different rules. This is GEAR. Uh, it's called GEAR. Um, we'll tell you what it stands for. I couldn't, I, it's, it's an acronym, GEAR. But basically, some of this has to be spent by the end of 2022, and some of it has to be spent by the end of 2023. So the districts know which grant they got, but the care, anything that came out of CARES 1 has to be spent by the end of 2022. Anything that came out of CARES 2 has to be funded by the end of 2023. And uh, those decisions were, it was made based on what the proposals were, uh, which whether they wanted that two year or three year runway uh, for the for the funding. Uh, and did that answer that Marianne or did any? No, that's that's great. Thank you very much. Okay. I, know, I know what gear is, so yep. not, not a problem there. <laughs> Thank you. Next question. So the first round was the first round were awards from from Gear One from CARES Act One. This this round included awards from both CARES One and CARES Two. Okay, go ahead. Next question. Hi, my name is Natalie Chuck. I'm um, the Pueblo reporter with KOAA News Five, based out of Colorado Springs. Um, I'm more interested in and maybe I missed some of it if we touched on it, but Pueblo Community College's involvement in in these grants and everything and. Um, one, why they were chosen, two, exactly how much money is going to their program specifically, and um, also exactly what areas the program is going to reach out to, because I know it's reaching, quote unquote, rural Colorado, but, but what areas exactly? Sorry to make it about all about Pueblo, but. Yeah, that's what Pueblo Community <laughs> College on, so I'll go to her in just a second. Two of the largest awards uh, were in Southern Colorado. Uh, Adams State, working with all of the school districts in the San Luis Valley, came up with a very compelling proposal, including uh, providing for paid apprenticeship work for high school students so they can earn credit and earn get paid. And then Pueblo Community College worked with, um, pulled together several regional community colleges, including Otero and Northeast and others, to help bring more concurrent enrollment into high school classrooms in remote areas in two ways. One is by helping to train up high school teachers to provide community college credit at the high school level. And the second is through online. And I'll go ahead and go to uh, Patty to describe that. Thank you. Thank you, Governor, for this opportunity. Um, and we sincerely appreciate your vision and your passion for student success. Um, as the governor indicated, uh, six of the uh, 13 community colleges came together. Uh, five of us are Hispanic serving institutions, and we will partner with 70 different high schools located largely in the most rural portion of the state, uh, 33 total counties, to increase equity and access to college level courses 
for remote uh, areas and high school students. Um, we will equip over 50 high school classrooms and 161 college classrooms with state-of-the-art teaching and learning technology that can be used to help students learn remotely and will uh, enable course uh, sharing among our colleges. Um, we will provide professional development and training opportunities uh, to uh, about 214 faculty members uh, regarding the use of this technology in a synchronous remote modality of curriculum. And over 100 high school teachers will be offered scholarships to obtain the higher education credentials necessary to teach college level coursework. But most importantly, our goal is to improve the student success of concurrent enrollment by 93%, assuring that academic achievement is uh, to academic, academic achievement to the most underrepresented students in these 33 rural counties becomes the norm. And ultimately, this collective work between the high school districts and community colleges will provide students with meaningful academic pathways that will yield an education and the competencies necessary to fill the ever-growing skills gap in our state. Perfect. And then exactly how much money do we know is going to that um, community college funds? I know we said something about I don't know. I'm going to have my numbers wrong. So if anyone has answered that before I say them, it'd be good. Pueblo Community College grant is just over $2 million. Okay, perfect. And then will we be able to get a list of those specific high schools in those rural areas just so when I write an article, they can reference it and know that it's coming to them? Yes, we yes. have quite a list and I'll be happy to provide that to you. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Next question. Hi there, it's Carly Moore here with Fox 21 News in Colorado Springs and Pueblo. I was also directing my questions uh, to Dr. Erjavik here. I just wanted to see, I um, I grew up in Pueblo and I was able to take advantage of some concurrent enrollment classes uh, back in the day. <laughs> and it, it really does make a difference as far as saving money on tuition and, and things like that. So I just wanted to see, um, you know, Growing up in Pueblo, it's not exactly rural, but being able to expand this program um, out to even more rural communities. Um, Dr. Javik, just what does it mean to you that PCC is kind of spearheading this and making sure that, that other students in rural communities have this opportunity? Well, we're just so excited for the opportunity to think that uh, any student, regardless of where they live, uh, will have opportunities for academic success. Um, we know it's easier in our urban areas for students to access higher education, uh, but in these remote areas where the population isn't very great, it's difficult for us to be uh, effective in that delivery. This technology will ensure that every student has the opportunity for a higher education. Thank you so much. Hi, this is Erica Meltzer from Chalkbeat. Um, this question is for Chairman Hart. I've been following the, some of the local coverage of the, the school that you all have been working on. And I was wondering if you could talk about how this, um, how does this funding maybe let you do more than you would have been able to do without it or, or maybe develop the program faster? Thank you for that question. Um, what we're envisioning is that currently um, we have some students going up here to our local public school. Probably three-fourths of our students here from the reservation. And we've had some other students go to boarding schools in Oklahoma, California, up in Washington. What we want to do is bring it home and create a curriculum that really meets the needs of our students. And I think each tribe is different in their own way in language and culture. We wanted to implement something into the curriculum that would help them understand where they come from. In the in the past generations of our grandfathers and our parents, a lot of our students were taken away from their homes and they were taught to assimilate into the system. Right now, we want to back it 
back up the education process. And I think each one of us are also looking at streamlining education to meet the needs of our future. And we also want to include the past. So as we start to create this academy here, a new school on the Ute Mountain Ute Reservation, also being in a rural area in the very four corners of the state of Colorado, that we need to try to meet the needs. We need to keep our students up with today's time and technology, especially during this challenging time during COVID. So we want to implement something that based on the curriculum that meets the needs of our students, whether it's science, math, art, um, engineering, and technology. So STEAM is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. These are the areas that we're targeting just as each one of these schools are across this country. So with that, thank you for that question. Hope that answers your question. Thank you. Any additional questions? I believe that's the last question from Chalkbeat. Thank you all. Congratulations to all of the great visionaries uh, at the in school districts and community colleges across the state. Really, uh, with this transformative investment, it being able to, being able to meet the needs of students and families where they are to build back stronger than ever before from the pandemic, focusing on those who are most impacted from a health perspective, an economic perspective, and a social emotional perspective. Thank you all for all your great work, and the state looks forward to partnering with you to help make these amazing, terrific programs a reality and uh, measuring and demonstrating success to help expand and replicate across Colorado and across the nation. Thank you. Thank you.